Welcome to the MSME Radio Network. The broadcast shows are for informational and entertainment purposes only. They are not designed to provide listeners with specific personal, medical, or counseling advice. Individuals with a medical issue should always consult their health care provider. MSME is not responsible for content of individual shows. The views expressed by show hosts or their guests are their own. Enjoy the show. This is Don Melanie. I thank you for joining me today for this week's episode of Managing Self, a program that allows me to share with you, the listeners, how I manage myself with multiple sclerosis for the past two decades. How I manage myself with one core goal, good health. Daily, I employ elements that I've deemed key in my personal success of my MS journey. Undoubtedly, my faith is at the apex of this pyramid of tools. Everything I do, everything I say, everything that I set out to accomplish, my successes, my struggles, my successes, are all contingent upon my faith. Or should I say, are all strengthened by my faith. That faith is unwavered. Whether, they're, whether I experience a struggle or success, my faith is unwavered. Everything's encompassed by my faith. Now, faith is not something visible or tangible. It may indeed mean different things to different people. Um, But I feel that it's a prerequisite for hope, for hope and for love. And me managing myself is largely a reflection of my hope that soon one day, when the cure is found for MS, the cure for MS is found, shall I say, and not oral. When a cure is found, and of course it's FDA approved, and uh, it's gone through all the red tape, and uh, we all have affordable distribution of it, I'll be able to say, I hope, one day, I'll be able to say, I remember when I had MS. I remember when I had multiple sclerosis. But until that day, every day that I wake up, I'll continue, to, I'll continue to love, particularly myself, my self-love. And like I said, it's the most crucial, crucial element that impacts that is my faith, my strong faith. Living a, a fitness-enriched lifestyle, it's critical to my success also. That is in managing myself. So um, I do things that are healthy. I try to engage in healthy relationships with my my friends, my family, and oftentimes just having a good old time, usually involving another one of my favorite elements, food. Um, But food more of a health promoting, food comprising more so of health promoting uh, selections of items. And um, I say this because there's just too much information out there to ignore the facts that about the negative consequences um, of uh, consumption of less healthy food items, especially the ones that are known and proven to cause inflammation, which isn't good for people with MS and other chronic illnesses. Um, I assure you all, before I was diagnosed with MS in 1999, I may have been the victim of a fixed mindset. You know, I, I speak to you how my faith and how I'm so uh, driven to do these uh, you know, these things uh, to, to, to stay healthy, but I may have been the victim of a, a fixed mindset. Everything I did was based on goals, uh, hard numbers. You know, I, I'm a CPA, <laughs> and working in corporate America, that's, you know, performance is uh, my performance, my job performance, uh, my ICP or my, <laughs> my uh, incentive compensation pay based upon performance. So I looked at hard numbers a lot of times like that. So before my diagnosis with MS, that was my, my mindset. That's how I thought. That's how I functioned. And I uh, understand that you know, this type of mindset or just a general fixed mindset is kind of, hmm, I want to say, a hindrance for us, for our growth and development. Um, if we can't um, learn to strengthen our growth mindset. Um, see, our fixed mindset, it believes that, you know, okay, well, we are what we are. That's it. Our strengths, our abilities... We're born with them, and that's it. Little we can do to change it, that's it. But the growth mindset, it believes that 
and we can continually gain new strengths and abilities by learning and practicing new skills. People say, man, MS, well, I'll say a lot of negative things about MS, but one thing I rarely hear is the good that MS has brought to them into their lives and how it's changed them. Um, fixed mindset versus growth mindset. I said, my, my MS, <laughs> I think it helped to give me uh, or develop very strongly a, a growth mindset. Um, basically, I learned how to create goals that uh, led, to, to, led to actually to challenges. And, um, you know, basically, I, I've always been in search of new knowledge and experiences of MS, any uh, research development, uh, case studies, um, any medications that were um, being a, was it a trial, trial experiment, or whatever you call that. But I was always interested in that. So that, you know, challenges, doing things that people say you can't do. Like, you know, you can't, I don't know, you can't compete on stage. How can you be a bodybuilder working out and, uh, <laughs> you know, getting that, you know, single digit body fat percentage? And how can you do that with MS? Well, with mindset, um, learning my body and uh, pushing myself to the limit and sometimes beyond, but also being cognizant of uh, my abilities. Uh, I always say I focus on my abilities and not really so much my disabilities because I believe each of us have abilities unique to us and well, we just don't have, no one has the same set of cards. So um, that growth mindset wants me to grow and become more. It's, it's, it's kind of surreal, but I always say because of my diagnosis with, pardon me, my diagnosis with multiple sclerosis, I became a competitive figure competitor. People say, huh? It always kind of confuses them, like, you know, again, the working out, competing uh, with MS. But it's because of my growth mindset that I was able to evolve into that. Yep, I wasn't too happy about the MS diagnosis. Um, overall, but I was able to come out of that, my comfort zone of just doing the same old, same old things, um, pretty much because I didn't want to stagnate my growth. Um, in fact, I wanted to accelerate my growth because I knew that now there are things that I shouldn't be doing that or, or would be detrimental to my health. So I knew I had to stop those things. So, but I do, didn't want to continue to grow. And, um, I realized, I realized now, especially that, uh, Maintaining a fixed mindset will naturally, you know, we'll kind of stay where we are, kind of stay put or stay stuck where we are. But a fixed mindset generally spends less time in discomfort. You know, uh, people with fixed mindsets, they don't want the consequence of a failure <clears throat> to occur. So, <clears throat> unfortunately, uh, progression of their uh, development is a slower, de slower rate. And the slower development leads to less opportunity for them to grow over time. So I don't want to maintain this fixed mindset. I wanted to strengthen my growth mindset. Every day I strive to develop, um, make stronger my growth mindset. Um, I do this by employing certain actions, actions that I can control, actions that I have a, a choice to make. Um, one thing I do is um, I embrace my imperfection. We often speak of MS as a snowflake disease, but it's because of my imperfections that makes me special. My abilities are different than yours. They're not your disability, they're just my abilities. And I um, I embrace them all. Um, another thing I do is I try not to use things like can't or never, instead use words like yet. I say to myself, Okay, I'm working on it. I'm not there yet, but there's always room to improvement, and I'll continue to work on it. Um, I embrace any failures that I have on my on the journey of me learning something. Um, you've heard me say I appreciate the negative. That means I look at it as well. I've grown that much more. Um, I look how far I've come instead of how how long it's taken me to to get to the goal. Um, another element I do is I. Um, I try to spend time with people who have a, uh, a growth mindset. Um, oftentimes at the gym, I'm hanging out with my older buddies. They're like 70s, 80s, which they have pretty pretty much pretty good growth mindsets, I'd say. And someone once said, you're the average of the five people you spend the most time with. So that's 
I guess I think it's in my favor. Um, <laughs> you know, I, I ask you, but you may want to like sit back and think about who you spend time with mostly. Um, another element that I use to help strengthen my growth mindset is I celebrate it. I celebrate my growth. Um, I do recognize I have failures or shortcomings, um, struggles, but my successes, I do celebrate them because no matter how small they are, that's one step closer to me having a strong growth mindset. Sometimes we just have to simply go out, go out on a limb. I understand, but I'm not going to sit here and go, oh, what was me? I messed up my energy. I can't do anything. No, no, no. I want to continue to grow. And that's why I encourage you all to expand, to, to create, to develop, to strengthen your growth mindset. It'll occur if you just like, it'll occur if you uh, exercise or, you know, do those actions, for instance, those actions that I suggested earlier, if you do those daily basis of it, soft, as often as you can, employ those actions, it'll, it'll occur. It's not magic. You know, magic is, magic is like a, a power of basically influencing the course of an event by using mysterious and supernatural forces. Magic. Ooh. Magic. MS ain't magic. Uh, <laughs> unfortunately, or so I say fortunately, otherwise we'd be like witches and warlocks, I guess. But be con be cognizant of your actions and things that you do uh, as far as relating to your outcomes. Um, Harry Houdini said, well, the eyes see and the eyes, pardon me, yeah, what the ears see. No, sorry. What the eyes see and the ears hear, the mind believes. What the eyes see and the ears hear, the mind believes. Interesting. Sounds pretty consistent with what I've said earlier about the uh, mindset. Our mind is powerful. Our mind is very powerful. Um, it's, let's see, we're in the second week of the year 2019, and uh, people are like, oh, what's your New Year's resolutions? And I'm kind of like, huh? I'm actually inclined to say, as Cyril Cusack said, if you ask me for my New Year's resolution, it would be to find out who I am. Then I may say something like Henry Moore said. I think in terms of the day's resolutions, not the years. So this week, I want to challenge you all listening today, and of course myself, to be acutely attentive to your level of focus on every aspect of your life, not just multiple sclerosis. I suggest focusing on one or maybe two areas per week. And this is to avoid or at least mitigate any chance of becoming overwhelmed by you know, making drastic changes. Um, be conscious of your words. Be conscious of your actions. Um, and be honest with yourselves of the intent with whatever you said. You know, be conscious, conscious of the intent um, whether you said something or not said something, whether you did something or did not do something, I understand with intent, um, careful planning, and execution of any said personal goals, <clears throat> pardon me, along with determination, willpower, and focus, they can all come to fruition. Even change, changes of habits we currently deem as second nature, good and bad ones. Now, as you go through the week, next week, um, to the month, the rest of the month, uh, the rest of the year, and uh, even beyond that. If you need a theme song to kind of set the mood, you know, to make you kind of ready for the, get ready for the fight, um, that is, you know, making changes in your life, um, honing, honing in on your skills and uh, focusing on what you want to accomplish. Um, I'm going to suggest listen to a very, a very, memorable or recognizable song um, from the movie Rocky. The song is Eye of the Tiger. And um, <laughs> it's kind of trite to say, you know, kind of to get get one get someone pumped up for a situation. But um, Eye of the Tiger, it describes basically someone training hard, training really hard to overcome hardships. And uh, it's essentially become an anthem for pretty much every sports events and a lot of boxing events like that. But you know, you may be like, well, wait a minute, I have MS, 
and surely I don't box, well, neither do I, I don't box, I don't do karate, mixed martial arts, uh, pretty much none of that stuff, but I do have a mess, and I think this song, I Have the Tiger, kind of in, 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 in embodies, or shall say envelops, um, what we do day to day, uh, facing hardships and overcoming them, um, conditions that that are difficult to endure. Um, for me, that's not a uh, it's, it's not a foreign object or not not a foreign uh, concept, and I'm sure many of you out there can relate to this as well. Um, for me, I know over the past two decades dealing with multiple sclerosis, sometimes the constant toils were very hard to bear. And unfortunately, accompanied by correlating periods, periods of discomfort. I have been knocked down by MS several times, literally and figuratively. And I've gotten up one time greater than the times that I've fallen. But equally important is I've avoided a lot of falls because I remain focused, focused on my number one priority. That is my good health, um, leading to, I'd say, a very, or most favorable, favorable quality of life. Stress-free, never, but stress-less, my game plan. So here's a funny anecdote of my life. I really had a burning desire to be the first female NFL player, but unfortunately, or fortunately, Depends on how you look at it. I stopped growing at the age of 12. I mean, that was over 34 years ago. I'm the same size as I was when I was 12 years old. I'm 46 today. Anyway, then I was to be on the team, or then I had a, this goal or dream to be on um, Team USA's women mountain biking team in the Olympic Games. I was prepping, like, every day. Every day that it didn't rain. Um, I was on my bike after work. Um, sometimes I would take a week off from work, overtime built up, and I would just go riding. Um, but like I said, I, I saw it in on the let's see, it was summer 1996, the Olympic Games, uh, mountain biking made its debut, and um, that was a little less than a year that I moved to Texas from New Orleans, and uh, not even well, yeah, just over two years or two years later, I I say I caught MS, but more technically speaking, my symptoms of MS onset, fall 1998. That's the year that I made my debut as a um, quarterback, as my own self-advocate of my health. Um, I had to call an audible, I called several audibles. Um, in football, an audible, pardon me, an audible refers to the quarterback basically changing the play at the last minute based on how he sees the defense lining up. You know, if he thinks he's going to get sacked or a blitz going to come on him, he's going to change up the play. So um, the quarterback calls out the play, you know, change it vocally. You know, it's kind of yelling to his team members while they're already lined up on the line of scrimmage for the play. Now, as a leader of my self, as a manager myself, which I, I didn't recognize until now that I was actually, those beginning stages, stages of me, man to myself, being a quarterback to my own offense and defense, dealing with multiple sclerosis. Um, I know that I need to be aware at all times. So um, MS, you know, I, I couldn't go, pardon me, I couldn't further train as if I was going to get go to the Olympics because the heat in Texas was just unbearable um, over 110 degrees several days in a row. And um, we all know what heat does with that. Um, it's a bad thing for MSers, um, usually leading to a, a flare-up or exacerbation. Yeah, I know. That was then. This is now. Um, but another the then was actually my um, collegiate days. I played intramural flag football. And I was uh, I was on a team. We, we had, had a great time. However, our team failed to win even one solitary game. Um, myself and all of my teammates... We literally jogged off of the playing field after our defeat. We went back to our respective dorm rooms with as much fervor, as much excitement or 
passion, shall I say, as we did when we ran to the fuel to play the game. Um, were we crazy? Mm, a little bit, I think. But today I understand that, as Ben Franklin said, which is funny because I went to Ben Franklin High School, Ben Franklin said, uh, happiness depends more on the in inward disposition of mind than on outward circumstances. I can't be stagnant waiting to hear for the last kernel of microwave popcorn to pop. That is before taking it out taking the bag out of the microwave, letting the steam off, and waiting to devour my snack. Of course, I can. I can wait till the last kernel pop, but I'll risk burning all the popped kernels, thus sacrificing the overall quality of my product, the bag of popcorn. So for the sake of a small, significant factor of a couple of kernels may not be popped, I'll wait. Greek philosopher Aristotle said, the whole is greater than the sum of the parts. Remember that. I do. Sure, I have a mess. I have multiple sclerosis. It doesn't have me. Yada, yada, yada. I have had MS for the past two decades. But I also have a winning drive and determination that won't quit. An absolute? Nope, not at all. Um, there's been times where I've been a little down or under the weather uh, regarding to my uh, dealings with MS, but I try. I try every day making an honest effort on a regular basis. You know, not just, eh, mm, eh I'll, I'll try a little bit, but I really do make an honest effort. I accept my responsibility for my actions, you know. If I don't go to the gym in this beautiful weather, uh, no traffic out, things like that, I feel great, great breakfast, plenty of sleep, and I decide to sit down and not do anything, that's on me. So I accept my actions for everything that I do. Um, I recognize my successes. I celebrate them, you know. Um, I'm proud of my successes. And uh, any failures that I have, um, I, 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 I'm, I, unfortunately, I do keep score. Um, I, I keep score so that I can be accountable to myself and, um, not be surprised when I see the end result. Um, you know, I tell people that say, oh, I don't know how I gained this much weight. Uh, you know, uh, I used to be a size, a size, size two or, you know, whatever one may say. I'm like, well, yeah, but did you always eat three Whoppers each lunchtime in addition to the fries and the Coke that's filled with empty calories with all the sugar? It didn't happen overnight. So I, re I recognize my, my struggles. I recognize my successes. Um, Ultimately, blaming no one for any of them. My successes and definitely not for my shortcomings. So, if you're finishing up your popcorn as you've been listening to my show this week, hope you've enjoyed it. Um, hope you enjoyed the uh, show overall. And um, as always, I thank you for listening and joining me. This is Dawn Melanie, and I do hope you'll join me next week for another episode of Managing Self. Till then, do have a blessed week.